I know the kids have some questions. Uh, Violetta has been uh, asking, what do the kids want to oh, know? I see some old kids out there. No, I think there's there's the little ones are somewhere around here, maybe in another room or something. Or Violetta, do they have questions? Or if you can write them to me. Or Klaus, do they do you have the kids with you? Hey, Kristen, real yes. quick before we, I, I got to say, um, thank you. I think you sent me the link from last night, the, yes. your concert. That was brilliant. And, okay. and I, I just started watching it this morning, but I just want to throw Klaus some props there. I mean, opening, Vic, he, he's got a mentality like yours. He, he opened this concert with uh, Eye of the Tiger by Survivor on double bass and piano, and it was Killing! Oh yeah, you, you got it. I love that already. Oh yeah. yeah, it was it was a really beautiful concert with all the variety and solo tango bass with Juan Pablo Navarro. It was really just a wonderful show. Thanks, yeah. thanks, Klaus. I see you sitting there. I'm kind of looking at the side. There, there you are. Wow! Oh, okay. welcome to Bavaria. <laughs> Thank you. This is the Bavarian bass days audience you have today and you had a, a a very big one yesterday in the hall and it was a it was a, a huge uh, impact on the hall and on everybody there and they've been super happy to hear you and we have a lot of uh, mixed styles of players here it is like the mini bass players it's classical pros there are some electric bass players and it is like something that connects all all the bassists, all the styles, and the contribution of your music to this was uh, was was a, was unbelievable, precious. Thank you very much, Steve and Victor. You're welcome. Thanks for having us. There is one question. I have maybe for in general for everybody like you did this book the music lesson right because, yes um and it's uh for example our pianist here he's i mean he's not he's not a bassist he's a pianist but but he's very inter interested in the in the in the in the bigger shape of of this book is there something you you can tell us about the the, the book in a in a in, in yeah in general yeah well, um, th there's a few things in the book, but one of the main ones is to raise the awareness of, of different parts of music other than the notes. It seems to me when I, when I look at the theory of music that we teach, it's, it's maybe 90% notes and there's only 12 notes. And when you buy your instruments, your, the notes came with it. And everyone's using the same notes, but we all sound different. So what is making us different? And I realize it's the tone, it's the way we phrase, it's how we use space. It's, you know, the, the dynamics. Music is a whole bunch of different things. You know, when we get up to dance, we're not dancing to the key of the song at all. There's rhythm that's going on that moves your body. So I realized, wow, music theory doesn't cover those things a lot. We talk about tone, but there's no theory for it. Like we have modes of notes, we don't have modes of rhythm. Yeah, we don't really teach how not to play a note, but to play space. We teach space as if we're not playing, but you are playing. If I write music and I say, I don't want to hear a note, I'll write something in that measure that says, play this. It's a rest, but you're playing. I don't leave empty measures and say, don't play, you know, check Facebook. No, you're still playing. So, but I realized we're not teaching these other things enough. So I decided to write a book that had a chapter on each of them. And then instead of just talking about music in those chapters, let's talk about life. So you can see other ways like space and talking the same way right now I'm talking and everyone around the world is looking at me. But in many cases, when someone is soloing or singing, we're looking at our neck of our instrument. When we should be looking at the person talking so that we can really hear, it's hard to look at someone and not hear them. But if I can ask something, why do yeah. you that big difference occur you know it's like is it depending on the style is it depending on the cultural background is it 
depending on a geographical background because like you say I mean the way you uh, describe teaching or how it is taught or not depends on something no is it the style is it the the, the yeah the backgrounds or, or what do you think why is that yeah it depends on how in my opinion it depends on how you're taught Like in most cases, bluegrass is taught literally like under a tree. An old person teaches a fiddle tune to the next person or a mandolin or whatever. And you learn bluegrass through playing it, not so much through a book or a class. You just learn by playing it the same way we learn to talk. Uh, R&B and funk usually is, used, at least it used to be that same thing, where you just get together, you listen to a record, you learn some songs, you go to the club and you play it. Classical traditionally is taught in a classroom through methods You use this book, which is why traditionally many classical musicians don't think they can improvise. It's because their musical style has never called for it. But for example, if you would teach uh, a Bach cello suite, how would you teach that? I mean, you, you need to have something that uh, at least remembers you on, on what you have to play because no one can remember a whole suite Uh, in his mind, you know, I mean, maybe some people can, but yeah, but that, that's what I would never tell a student, me personally. I would never tell you that you can't remember it because a kid will learn. You know, I, I if I if I had a, a big student who wanted to learn a Taylor Swift song or Billie Eilish or or a Michael Jackson song, I might start by teaching the chords and the bass lines of fingering, you know, put your finger here. But if you just play that kid that song, they're going to know the song quicker than you are. Yeah. They're going to know the lyrics. They may not know how to name the chords, but they're going to learn it because their body feels it. They dance to it. They move to it. So if I was going to, this is me personally, not, I'm not criticizing anyone, but if I was going to teach a Bach cello suite, we would first listen to it a few times. And I would ask the student, what they hear and what they feel, right? What they feel. I will not start by telling them what they're supposed to hear and what they're supposed to feel. That's maybe the normal teaching way, but no, I would start from their standpoint, right? And let them tell me what they hear and what they feel. And then we would work from there. So that's one of the things I would do is just, started because they might hear the whole thing and be able to sing it back to you first time. We don't know unless we find that out. But I would start, music is not, I, I don't think that Bach cello suite was written only to be studied and only to be analyzed. I think it was meant to be listened to, enjoyed and, and felt. So I believe if I let the student listen to it, maybe a couple of times, but I'm analyzing the student to see what they react to, to see what moves them, what fills them. Because once I find out what the student knows or doesn't know, only then can I truly teach them what they need to know. Hey Vic, the, the, the only thing I'll, because to me it sounds like the implication is that there there's not academic study. That's what it sounds to me like you're saying. And I'm just gonna, interject i know that's not what you're saying i know that's Thanks. absolutely not but but vic is in no way and you you stop me where i want where, where you want but he's not implying that there's not an academic study of a bach cello suite he he didn't mention the actual score of it and reading it and understanding the harmony of it um which, which comes and and i agree with him wholeheartedly after listening to it not not learning the notes and then listening to it, but listening to it and getting getting what Bach intended. Because Bach didn't, I don't think so. I don't think he just wrote a bunch of pretty notes for you to learn to play. I think he wrote music for people to listen to and enjoy. So starting at that point, when I give a student a new piece of music, I want them to listen to it first. But I also, Because I've heard people, uh, we've had some students audition who've learned some Bach or learned some classical music by ear, and often their ears aren't developed. They've learned, gotten better, but there's there if you 
compared what they played to what the original score is, they've, they, they didn't learn it 100% from the score. So I think there's a nice balance in there. Once you learn it, let's get the music out. Let's really examine it. Let's do a harmonic analysis of it. And let's figure out what those, that chord movement is that's going on inside of that. And let's dig deeper into it. Let's look at, at different ways to play the dynamics. And let's mark that on our, on our chart or on our score so that, that when we go to teach it ourselves, we've got a point of reference. And when we go to play it, because I can't remember, um, well, I can for a short amount of time. I've learned most of the cello su suites, but, but I have to refer back to the music. So being a good reader is, is paramount to all of this. I mean, and, and Vic, you know, he talks like he doesn't read music. Don't let him fool you. He, oh, I mean, he, sorry, it was just, you know, to, to talk about Bach was an example of the, of the earlier periods and how to teach that. I mean, what we know here is about the Bach background. It is like Bach said by himself in the end, and every note for the honor of God. And this is something, you know, if you have this here, it's the same thing like Victor says, the bluegrass player has this and this, but the background of the music, where it comes from, where it is originally played, like if you see the churches that we have here, like, uh, Leipzig, Dresden, where Bach was. I mean, that has a specific sound that is not reached anywhere in the world because he wrote exactly for that place and with this in his heart. So I think the, what we said, the geographical, the social background, and all this makes such a big impact on how we approach music and an instrument. And nowadays, like we have, we can talk from America to Denmark to Bavaria in a second, you know? And I feel like to share what we are doing here now is a, a super important thing because, you know, we are not used here to talk to someone who is sitting in Boston at the moment. And maybe, for, or for sure, Victor has a totally different background than I have and then he has and then you have and that Christine has or something. And that thing, I think, is super exciting to analyze on how that impacts the teaching. And I think, like, I, we met already here, Steve, and it was, I always love to remember your visit. I must always say this, it was so cool to have you here. And it was so cool to hear the reactions of the audience on your playing, because this is something we don't have here. Someone who is sitting alone with the electric bass in front of 200 people and they are totally silent. You know, it's, it's rare because they were so excited about your music. And this is something because you brought your spirit. You know, it's of, of course your artistry, but also your spirit, the way you talk, the way you phrase, the way you do this and this, is something that is unique here. I mean, also unique there, of course. And the same thing happens with this music of Bach, if you have in your heart that he wrote it, every note to the honor of God, you play it differently, only with this information, I think. And this is something that, why, why I do the whole thing, to, to, to share all that spirits and to hear Victor talk, to hear you talk, to hear Christine talk, because we all have a different inclination or uh, way of teaching and, and thinking about the whole thing. And that's, that's why I was talking about Bach. In, in comparison with this, well, I talk too much. <laughs> no, that's very, 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 very good. Very, very good. Yeah, I, lo I love that. Um, but I, you know, for, for me, it, it, it comes down to what my parents always said. It, it's who you are as a musician or as a person. And which is why I say, is, I think it's imperative for us teachers to find out who the student is. Um, instead of just teaching, you know, and it's hard to not just teach our curriculum because we don't usually have time to find out who each student is. But I will just say this, my goal in teaching is the same goal that my parents had with us five boys, as well as my brothers who taught me, is to make the student, to help the student rather discover who they are and become the best at that because that that's what the world needs the world needs the first you we don't need the second Bach or the third Bach 
but we may find out who we are by studying the Bach. But uh, so I think it, it's all a piece of the puzzle. But I think the grand, th uh, the grand uh, uh, place we're, we're we're going for is when you find a Steve Bailey who sounds like no one else, because he knows who he is. And a lot of that journey is from listening to Stanley Clark, from listening to Bach, from listening to all of these different types of music, but not losing them, losing himself in the process. And I think that's one of my main goals when I get to work with musicians or speak with them is, uh, is for them to know who they are. And, by, and you do it by learning what other people, like Steve said, uh, we learn to talk by listening and copying other people, but we don't lose ourselves in the process. So I think that's what I'm getting at. And yeah, sometimes it, it may sound like I'm, I'm against academic and in no way am I. In no way, you know, I, I study cello in school. I read well, I know how to bow. Um, I play double bass a little bit. I love the academic side of it. I just want to add a little. To I mean, I am, I, uh, I feel like the challenge of the future of teaching is to connect these things, you know, to connect the academic and also the I don't know how you call it, the free style of, of, of teaching to, to something that leads into a musical world where, you know, we, 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 we strive for, for a lot of positive things, you know, to, 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 to also not only uh, teach music, but also teach, like you say, to, to become you, to become a self-convenient person in this world that spreads joy and good things. Yeah. Hey Vic, you you may not know. I mean, I, and and I'm looking at this, and I'm I'm listening to Klaus talk, but but and I should I should send you a link about some of the stuff that Klaus has done in developing a mini bass, and and you wouldn't believe when when Kristen is talking about kids, she's not kidding. I've been to that that camp there. There are kids like waist high on me and you know that's short and uh <laughs> that, that are playing bass and and not just one or two but but whole groups of them and klaus goes out and does clinics to try to bring younger people to the instrument in in a way that that, that it's really kind of mind-blowing so uh um I, and i also love you know I, i'm looking at this screen and i'm seeing Kristen, i'm seeing klaus and i'm seeing victor and and uh and realizing everybody in this screen has a unique thing a, new, a unique voice but everybody can play bass and that's that's what our job is so uh, i'm already, i'm just kind of fantasizing about a quartet here this looks pretty serious i mean you you you've heard Kristen, and then klaus like he has a group i heard at an isb playing metallica tunes with five basses and that's the kind of warped mind that you and I like to play with, Vic. Absolutely. And he's even got his kids singing, you know, even these these little guys that are just, it was, I played a concert there right before Klaus started uh, the bass days. It was in 14, right, Klaus? And the kids did part of the concert and they were all singing and playing. And it's like, you got to be kidding me. These little guys, because they don't know that, you know, they just do it because that's what you do. You know, and I um, love that. It's it's really, really, really cool. And I this conversation, it. I'm thinking, could go on for at least another couple of hours. But <laughs> we do if have you leave to it wrap up to it Vic, up. You leave it to Vic, it will. Oh, I'd bring <laughs> ice cream, man. We'd have some ice cream. Yeah, and you know, I hope we can we can continue this this conversation in a certain point and and stay in contact because I think this these are we, we spread some seeds now. And I hope we can grow them to big trees in the future. And again, I, I mean, I don't know how much I can show here of Bavaria, maybe a little, little, little thing. My face is way too big on that screen. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see something. Nice. It's, it's a tiny city okay. here. Wow. Yes. It's the, the classroom where we are. And here you are, you see? <laughs>
Hey, Klaus, is, is that the room? And I had one of the big honors of my life a couple of years ago when I was there, and it was to play some music with Francois Rabath. Is that the same room that I played with him in? It looks like it. That's the same room. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's funny how, you know, Vic, we, we have those moments where, like, you won't forget recognizing um, uh, Edgar the other night backstage. Like, you, you, that will be with you forever. And, and playing in that room with Francois Rabath was just like a, a lifelong dream come true, you know. So when I see that room, my mind just goes right back, right back to the, the key of C. <laughs> I captured this. I have I have a video of of this playing you and and Francois together. Mm. I I will send you the link for this. It's on okay. the PlayStation side. And it was also it was for me one also of one of my greatest moments. And that's you know the core of everything to bring together the electric bass player from the rock and roll style or jazz and to bring together the classical style in one piece you know in one piece literally and this was just wow it was it was super great <laughs> very cool well you guys thank you so so very much for taking the time to to be with everybody here today and um thank you for your wonderful performances yesterday that was really really great to hear and see and uh Klaus, is there anything else you wanted to add before we let them go? Um, well, it was our and my big honor to have you on the show yesterday, especially now to talk together and spread seeds. Let's grow trees. Thank you so much for everything you did here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Cool. Thank you guys so much. All right. Thanks. tuning down and it went out of focus it was, wasn't planned <laughs>